Problem 7.1-2. The pressurized gas tank has an inner diameter of 3 feet and will hold a pressure of 350 psi. Find the maximum wall thickness required if the wall material has an allowable strength of 30 psi. If the diameter of each bolt shank is 0 0.25 inches and the allowable tensile strength of the bolt material is 90 psi, also determine the required number of bolts to connect the two halves of the tank. Here we have a spherical tank and on this flange we see bolts connecting the two hemispherical ends. We were given the uh, pressure of the tank and the allowable strength of the material so we can find wall thickness and then we need to use the uh, information given about the bolts to find out how many of these bolts will be required uh, to connect the two ends together. For sphere, the stress in the tank wall is equal to uh, sigma 2, which is PR over 2T. And we can rewrite that equation to solve for T, and we'll get this expression shown here. And I've noticed I've replaced sigma 2 with sigma allowable. That's the allowable strength of the wall material. And now we can solve for T, the wall thickness. Substituting in the values for pressure of 350 pounds per square inch, and radius, which is half the diameter, which is 3 feet, and converting it to inches by multiplying by a factor of 12, then dividing by and sigma allowable, which is 30,000 pounds per square inch, we get a value of T equal to 0 0.105 inches. For the next step, I'm going to consider the strength of a single bolt. Okay? Now, to calculate the strength of, the, of a bolt, we're going to use this equation here, sigma is equal to p over a. This equation applies to members that are loaded axially. And let's look at the bolt. Uh, here in this tank, uh, it's being the top half, or the lid of this tank, is being held down to the bottom half by a bunch of bolts here in the flange. And there's a force from the internal pressure trying to s lift the top half of the tank from the bottom half and the bolts are resisting that lifting force. That means the force on the bolt will be in tension and will be equal to some value P. And we can find what the maximum load P that we can put on a bolt is based on the allowable stress for the bolt which was 90 psi. And we can use this equation here and solve for P which will be the force on a single bolt is equal to the allowable stress times the cross-sectional area and A is the cross-sectional area of the bolt shank. And we can calculate the strength of a single bolt to be equal to 90 psi, that's the allowable stress, times the cross-sectional area. The diameter is 0.25 inches. That gives us a value of 4.418 kips. So a single bolt can hold 4.418 kips. Now what we need to find is what is the force trying to lift this lid? Once we find the force trying to lift this lid, we can divide it by the strength of a single bolt, and that'll tell us how many bolts we need. So I've drawn a free body diagram of the lid, and there's a force acting on the lid trying to push it off. And that force is equal to the internal pressure inside the tank times the cross-sectional area of the tank right along this line here. And that's just uh, based on the diameter, which we were given as uh, 3 feet. And solving for the force acting on the lid, that would be a pressure of 350 pounds per square inch. That was information that was given. Times the cross-sectional area uh, of the tank along this line here, which is going to be, uh, which has a diameter of 3 feet. And converting it to inches, and then we will uh, divide by 1,000 uh, in order to convert our answer from pounds into kips. And we get a value of 356.26 kips. Now we can find the number of bolts we need by taking the force acting on the lid, 356.26 kips, and dividing that by the strength of a single bolt, which is 4.418 kips. And we get a value of 80.64 bolts. Now we can't have 0.64 bolts, so we always round up to 81 bolts. And we're done.